Okay, it is Saturday in the park. Every day is the 4th of July, not Chicago. That, we was, already yes, had, that we, was two days ago. That was two days ago, the 4th of July. July. Saturday, July the 6th, 2013. Okay. July. And as you can see this week, I got my hair, I got a haircut. Actually, I got all my hairs cut. <laughs> I was just going to say, which one? Levity bells. Yeah, haircut. Yeah, get it? Haircut. And uh, the Irish Blackthorn Shillelagh is taking a break. It's on hiatus. It's on hiatus. I have authentic, authentic deer antler harvested by me brother-in-law. And this is to salute and commemorate. I don't care if that guy that I know on my, one of my groups says that I go overboard. Well, you know what? It's it's we're living in the end times, sir. It's the it's the kind of world we're living in. And when shit happens, sometimes it happens very abruptly. And in this past week, many things happened abruptly, like my car, the uh, us losing the telephone and the internet, uh, getting my new computer, the transition of getting a new PC, which it happens to be on YouTube, if you want to see it. You know, a lot of things, ha and then when they, I thought, when I thought they fixed my car, they found out it was, it's also the distributor that's causing it, not just the oil, the leaky gasket, you know, where the oil was coming out and, and the oil was getting on the plugs. It wasn't just that. It was something extra that was causing the car. That was causing the stalling? That was causing the stalling. The plugs were getting oil on them, and, uh, and plus the distributor was going. It wasn't, you know... You have a distributor. Distributor on top with the... Yeah, I know with what the it cap. is. It, it sends electricity to the plugs, right? Yeah. 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 Points and plugs. Right, there you go. So the tune-up, I, I, I got a synthetic oil change, which you should always go all synthetic, I mean, for certain reasons, uh, obvious reasons. But anyway, it's like, you know... Everything happens at once. Everything happening at <laughs> once in the summer just happens to be the time when all my bills come. Even hey. car insurance and this and then registration. And, Everything comes at once. Gee, if we were living under God's economics every seven years, you you would know nothing. Well, if, How about that? If Adam and Eve would have listened to God in the Garden of Eden, we wouldn't be here complaining about Republicans every week. And, and we wouldn't be complaining about the heat wave we're having outside, uh, 90 degrees uh, with plus with heat and humidity, and worrying about paying bills, well, if we buying food. Uh, paying uh, 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 highway robbery rents and mortgages, we wouldn't have all the. We wouldn't have the the, the, the crooked bankers in the United States, <laughs> Goldman Sachs, uh, Republican uh, a Congress. How about the Fed? The Fed. Yeah. We wouldn't have to. We wouldn't be Does fed it make up. Any sense for the United States of America? Block my joke. We wouldn't be fed up with the Fed. Go ahead. What are you going to say? United States of America. The United States of America, under the Constitution, can make its own money. So why does it have to borrow? Yeah. There would be no national debt. Well, they could do smart things, uh, intelligent things, like what Iceland did. Oh, they got to make the bankers rich. Like what Iceland, Iceland, thing. that the U.S. media never brings up, what Iceland did as an example, or or have a healthcare system like Canada and Europe has, and and ha making sure that a, a mind is not a terrible thing to waste by having every human being in the country, including poor children get a college education if you know if they if they have the the smarts to what if they don't have the smarts it wasn't meant to how be how do you get smart it wasn't meant to be how do you, you know get this smart? bullshit in america where every child is special oh oh everybody is special oh say that but how do you get smarts people 
paraplegic. Oh, you're special. Uh, a child that's kind of like not too intelligent. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry, dear. You're special. Yeah, but how do you get smart? I agree with Bill Morrow. Not everybody is special. And we're talking about special. I'm talking about smarts. Education. Yeah! Formal... So if you deny some people it, how do they get the smarts in the first place? Well, the Republicans... Not no, you just did it. Huh? No, I you said... No, I it. said... You said if it's, they... I said it's a, it's a right, a good education to all is a right, should not be a privilege like good health care and a happy retirement. I mean, adequate. But what I just said was, do you think everybody can make it through college? Well, all right, let's say they want to go to college for, let's say it takes them 10 years to get a bachelor's degree. Ooh. So if that's what they want to do, let them do it. What if they want to apprentice to their father? Uh, and they carry should, on his work. They should be able to do that. Oh no, too. he can't do that. You got to be licensed. You got to be certified. You got to be this, that, the other thing. Yeah, I know. Accredited. Isn't it funny that all the ripoff uh, uh, ac academia institutions in America, the accredited ones, are the ones that charge the most. That charge the most in tuition. Like there are kids today that I know. One 24-year-old that owes. Ninety thousand ah. dollars in college tuition. You believe that? And and he told me he knows other young young men, yes, young people yes. that owe more than ninety thousand dollars. And guess what? The what? interest on their student loans has gone up. Yeah, the Republicans don't. Thank you very much. They don't want to remove the interest. They want to raise the interest. Correct. Because they want to get money from those in the middle class and the poor. See, they keep on Reagan. They, they taught keep, them well. They right. keep on singling out the little guy every time the yeah. Republicans but let me get through the formalities all right uh, my imported blackthorn Irish shillelagh is taking a, a hiatus and I'm using an authentic deer antler harvested by my hunter brother-in-law who also builds my PCs my, com my computers uh, a genius of a man I call him a, a mad scientist because yeah. he's, uh, he's He's a tad bit, it's like me, you know, he's just a tad bit eccentric. But, you know, he's got a head on his shoulders, man, like no, no other. See this? Deer antlers. So I'm going to be swinging this around. And th this is also to honor uh, the, uh, all the um, Atkins uh, ketogenic, high-protein, low-carb diet people, the meat eaters, the carnivores out there. And uh, Dr. Bill, you found a uh, um, something in the Old Testament that relates to God giving permission uh, to people you know to to consume animal flesh for food there's, there's something well, in it's there. in the Old Testament it's, it's uh, other places too yeah uh, he, you know, so anyway he, those strict guidelines are uh, not in effect per se anymore right but I apologize about the uh, the cursing because I asked the cat you know this this more this a few cats here you know I mean you know where Reverend Bill's and the animal lover I am too but I, I the cat wanted to go out I says come on I'll let you out come on oh no it waits until after we go on the air then it decides it wants to go out devil's world so anyway let me get the formalities over with quick because that cat really pissed me off. Uh, I'm going to pipe aboard uh, my co-host and mentor for Progressive Discussions. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. I'm your host James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 and we're at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey and I will pipe aboard my co-host and mentor uh, aboard the uh, progressive liberal pirate ship. Wait. Oh my God. I have to start off properly because it must sound proper. Not half-ass. And one more time. Was that whole ass? Uh, Steve the cat that looks just like Sylvester and, and Felix, black and white, go fuck yourself. 
I mean, it's not going to hold a grudge against the cat. I do, but when it takes well, when it takes not when human. it takes the professionalism out of this show, yes, I do, I do, I do. I am allowed to have a harbor ill feelings when somebody interferes and and fucks the professionalism of this show. So what is professionalism? Is covers up stuff? Well, that professionalism that is not to be interrupted. When we, when we first go on the air with the introduction of the show, be interrupted and to open the friggin' door, and then I gotta make sure the flags are, are proper when I close the door, okay? It interrupts the introduction of the show, okay? And look, look. Billy fell on the floor. Billy Jr. fell on the floor because of that little prick, Steve. Billy Jr., the, uh, the lovely self-portrait of uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Welcome. That's the guy I piped the board before I got interrupted again. How are you feeling uh, this week? I know what you're going to say. What? That we're having a heat wave, a tropical heat wave outside. We're having a heat wave, a tropical heat wave. Yes. We're having a heat wave all week. That's true. I could take dry heat, but humidity, nah. Okay. Let's just hope the air conditioners, Steve. You know. Continue. Fucking, fucking animal. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, it's like, let's say, you got a a senior citizen at home. Let's say you got a mother or father and you ask them, okay, I brought you this and I brought you that. Are you comfortable? You need anything else? Nah, I'm okay. Are you sure? Nah, I'm okay. And then you leave the room and you go into to the other end of the house and they go, and they call your name. Hey. Oh, oh, could you, could you, could you get me one more thing? After you ask them, you know, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And then they wait till you walk away so you can walk all the way back. Well, it's good exercise. No, it's being a fucking pain in the ass. That's what it's being. People do it deliberately. Because if they understood English, they would understand, are you okay? Do you have everything you need now? And they say, yes, that means yes, I'm fine. Okay? And then they decide, when you're far away to bug you. And that's when I say, get up and get it yourself. Hey. 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 I'm progressive, but I'm not that far to the left. You know, we had a kid. We did a show. I don't want to mention names, with Billy Morrow. And uh, this kid was so paranoid, as like so neurotic about... Uh, saying saying a discouraging word about anything you know he he like he was one of those people like barney the dinosaur you know i love you you love me he looked at the world through rose colored glasses he refused to see anything negative he refused to complain he, he he didn't want people to dislike him and you know it's like hey in my school you got to break some eggs to make an omelet in life and you know you're not a troublemaker. You just don't take any shit. That's what uh, Jimmy Kasama, an old biker friend of mine, used to say in a bar. I don't start trouble. I just don't take any shit. <laughs> Very wise man. Very wise biker. Uh, but no, oh, oh, you can't say nothing. To, oh, oh, we can't. Oh, we're leading up to that too. This, you know, the sickening sycophants. Mm. I kind of, that's in one of the titles of uh, the show a couple weeks ago, Sickening Sycophants, otherwise known as, a, as an ass kisser. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're front kissers too. Hey! You see, you can't say nothing around him, man. He's, don't, don't, don't let him fool you. He's, he's not prudish and straight laced like you think. He gets a little wild there, Dr. Bill. Mm -hmm. Neat. Kissing front. At least I didn't say blowjob. Hey! Why oh, couldn't he's, he be? he's he's in a whole he's in a holy prudish mood this Wait week, Doc Bill. Why here. couldn't the front be cunnilingus? Cunnilingus. Yeah. What about Aer Lingus, the uh, Irish airline? 
Connie. If you want to go somewhere, I suppose. Connie. Connie Lingus. That's a, that's that's a good name for a girl. Uh, all right. Good. All right. Now, uh, all right. I'll start off with the uh, Chiseler's Hall of Shame. I would like to induct Ooh. the following into the Chiseler's Hall of Shame. Okay. Uh, number one, of course, Microsoft ah. Windows, which is loaded with glitches. I I tried to, because I because of certain personal reasons, I lost the program I usually use to edit video. Uh, so the person who built my PC gave me a much newer, upgraded. Uh, that cost money, a lot of mo more money, version of the same company, but man, was it hard for me to figure out. Oh boy. Okay, not user friendly, like many programs, okay? They design them for other technicians and other programmers. They don't design them for the mainstream population. And their instructions are crap. And you know what? I couldn't find any user uh, manual in a PD, what is it, wow. PDF? Help. 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 Other no. help? No, there was no, no help. help. Oh God. But you know what I found out? Their tech support, ha they wanted they wanted to be paid. Ah! So you buy the program. Where I'm talking about the uh, uh, CyberLink, the CyberLink uh, uh, um, program. Uh, yeah, it was Cy CyberLink. Um, the CyberLink company. They wanted to be paid for their tech support. It costs money. It's kind of like Microsoft, right? Mm. Yeah, like, like in other words, it's not good enough that you bought their product, their program, but you had to pay for help. So there was no help up there. So, lo and behold, I was forced to try Windows Movie Maker. And I finally did what I had to do. And I couldn't, it refused to save my, uh, my videos to the hard drive. And, and, and mind you, I have two terabytes of hard drive now. And it, sa it says I, I don't have enough room. Ah. I got tons of videos on the hard drive. How could I have not have enough room for perhaps a half hour or 45 minutes? I don't have enough room for that. Or no, it wasn't, it wasn't even a half hour. It, yeah, it was, it was a half hour, I'm sorry. How could there be no room? So all these glitches that make no sense, I have been encountering with Windows and Microsoft. They make no friggin' sense. So, um, shame on you. Where's the antlers? Shame on you, Microsoft uh, and, uh, and Windows Microsoft programs. You suck. Ooh. So does Bill Gates. I mean, look, just look at his face. He's not a very likable person. Unless you're an ass kisser or a front kisser and you worship Bill Gates. Like, in other words, when I was on the phone with my cable company, Optimum uh, Online, uh, Optimum Tech Support tells me, hey, Bill Gates and Microsoft, they rule the world. Uh, and he said it with, with glee. You glee, know, like, yeah, surprise. So there are many... Uh, people under the Bill Gates spell that are complete sycophants when it comes to Microsoft. There are many techies and people involved with computers that are real sickening sycophants when it comes to Microsoft and Windows. They know they know of no other. They don't choose to know of any other. But if you want to really meet in, in genius programmers with a lot of common sense. You meet the ones that create Linux distros. But they're not perfect either. But they're relatively, uh, they're actually trouble free compared to dealing with Microsoft and uh, you know Windows. Um, okay, I also want to say, I want to add to the Chiseler's Hall of Shame an appliance company called the Comfort Zone Fans. Uh, Comfort Zone fans have been known to burn out way earlier than the warranty. I'm saying like within a year, mm. they just burn out. I noticed there's a lot of appliances today that have a very short lifespan, like an incandescent bulb. 
They just die on you. Well, what does it say on a, like, 750 hours or something? Yeah, but like less something than like less than a year. You can make a bulb that can last a of lifetime. Well, a compact fluorescence and LEDs. No, I'm talking about appliances that just simply die on you. So, and there are many of them, and it's an American company, planned of course. Planned obsolescence never went bye bye. Yeah, planned obsolescence. It's it's American company, and uh, I want to add also to the Chisler's Hall of Shame, Logitech. I have owned one, two, three, three Logitech products, and they all died prematurely. Mm. I've owned a Logitech um, a keyboard, uh, a mouse, and a webcam, and they all burned out before their warranty. They have a two-year warranty, and they all died within a year. Mm. Planned obsolescence, perhaps? So, shame on you, Logitech, I will never buy out of pocket, unless somebody gives me one, I will never buy a Logitech product ever again. Okay, uh, now we're going to get to pets. Uh, in this case, the suppliers of exotic pets, critters, as you would call them, reptiles, two companies, Reptile City and Backwater Reptiles. Uh, whom I call now sewer water because they they make a sale they send you the exotic pet and you receive the exotic pet um, and then it is either very sick and you have to take it to the vet and spend all kinds of money on it or it simply dies mm. quick um, a relative of mine ordered from Backwater and he ordered three specimens and two of them died in two days. <gasps> Even after they ate. They just died. And the attitude, the customer service attitude of Backwater is horrible. You know, they should they shouldn't charge this person for shipping or charge him for anything. Uh, they said the animals were under warranty they should just send him a replacement of his choice and take the loss of the forty dollars mm. ov overnight live guaranteed shipment which is kind of expensive they should take the loss and pay for the shipping not tell the gentleman you have to pay for the shipping so backwater and as far as reptile city is concerned from texas that is the company where I got my beloved Piddly, my Australian blue tongue skink, and I spent all kinds of veterinary money from the herpetologist. This, this skink was wild caught. It was not captive bred like it should be, and it, it was infested with internal parasites. Yeah. It didn't eat. I had nothing but, but trouble, trouble, sadness, anger, everything, uh, uh, expensive, uh, veterinary bills, they're, they're crooks too, by the way. Veterinarians. They are. I mean, just to walk through the door, 60 bucks for, for, for a lizard. That's just a lizard. So, okay, so, hall of shame. Now, I want to trash uh, and bash uh, a show on TV, uh, like a Hollywood gossip show, very popular, called Entertainment Tonight. Okay, aside from Paula Dean, which you don't hear about anymore, you know, you know, she should... I just read in the paper today that some guy tried to extort her of $250,000, saying that Make her he more. would tell that she used some bad words, etc., if they, okay. she didn't pay him. And I'm glad you brought that up. Plus, she, she fired her agent. Because her empire is crumbling. I don't like the idea that she profusely and continually cried and apologized. Get over it. She made a couple mistakes. Uh, she said what she said. She apologized. Get over it. Get off the woman's back, for God's sakes. And the woman should not continuously cry and apologize and beg for forgiveness. Because you know what? People are allowed 
to think and feel the way they want. And this is what this is leading up to. Aside from Paula Dean, Entertainment Tonight has this, had, has this uh, psychologist that they consulted that says that actor Alec Baldwin needs to get help because of specific homophobic remarks he made. Mm. Uh, okay, now I'm I'm a I'm a, I'm a progressive liberal, but I'm not one of these ultra left wing politically correct sickening sycophant ass kissers. Uh, Alec Baldwin does not have to see a shrink. Maybe Alec Baldwin just had feels he has the right to make any joke he wants, anything that sounds funny to him, just like Paula Dean when she told the story about the plantation part, the party that, you know, set up like a southern plantation. Maybe that's how and maybe these things make them laugh. Maybe they found it funny. Or maybe a person just has the right to think and feel the way they want. Maybe some people feel they're justified in disliking certain groups of people. Maybe they're not justified. Or maybe they just feel like not liking certain groups of people. Hey, I, uh, Richard Simmons sickens the hell out of me. There are people that I, I just in, instinctively dislike. Believe me. And, and, so, and many of them are heterosexual. But maybe, you know, as far as Paula Dean goes, and how she, where she was brought up and and how she is as a person and Alec Baldwin overall people have the right to feel think the way they want and if something is off color if a joke is a little raunchy uh, you know like if Howard Stern tells a really raunchy Ooh. joke and it cracks him up so what it's funny things don't have to be prim and proper and you know in a fake phony Barney the dinosaur world you know you know there are people do have the right to think and feel the way they want so get off their damn backs Alec Baldwin does not have to see a shrink leave him alone Paula Dean leave her alone 